Oh, thank you, Tim. Um, can you hear me? Yes, all good. Oh, fantastic. Oh, good. Uh, well, good morning over the people from West Coast and uh, good afternoon, people on the East Coast. Uh, I thought I might I start off with just a little bit of an insight. Um, you know, um, as we head into a, what is essentially a post-COVID or even mid-COVID uh, era, leading companies are starting to rethink their future state. And uh, rather than debate what's changed, let's just agree that things have changed and things are evolving. And one of the joys of my job is to get to speak to a myriad of different people in, um, in various sectors around the world uh, and also here in Australia. And what I hear is, uh, is very vast, uh, but what I see are five clear pillars of change and opportunities to consider. And they are uh, embracing technology, uh, a commitment to quality, value versus price, uh, transparency and sustainability, of course. Uh, in our space, we're seeing brands and uh, market leader retailers pull away from their competition by doubling down on, on most of these pillars. And this has resulted in customers who pay a premium uh, for their products and also remain loyal, which I think are two massive wins in this day and age. So this dynamic, what I like to refer to as zeitgeist, allows Nanolos to develop within, because I feel that we, we touch upon many of those pillars. So to kick off our story, um, we've uh, to the next slide, we've got a video to show you that adds a little bit more color. Ever wonder where your clothes come from or how they're made? Today, millions of trees are harvested globally and chemically treated to extract a raw material called cellulose to make a fiber called rayon viscose. This practice has heightened environmental and sustainability concerns. Nanolose, a future tech biomaterials company, has been advancing two distinct technologies and establishing a supply chain to produce a greener raw material and textile fibre. The first technology takes liquid waste from food and agriculture sectors and grows this into a high yielding cellulose without trees that in turn uses considerably less land, chemicals, energy and is highly traceable. This cellulose is tree free. The second technology is then regenerating the tree free cellulose into the company's breakthrough fibre called Nullabore that has been spun into yarn. This yarn can be made into fabric to produce garments using standard and advanced manufacturing machinery, limiting the need for further investments, time and retrofitting costs. Nanolose has already signed supply and development agreements with four key industrial and global manufacturing partners that bring experience to the commercialization and supplying of Nullabore to uptakers in the textile industry. The significance of the Nanolose technologies is that they provide a solution to a number of ecological problems, along with being able to supply the increasing customer demand for greener options. The Nanolose tree-free alternative and Nullable fibre has generated significant interest globally as consumer sentiment drives change and companies look to bolster their climate targets and greener products. The mission is to build a technology and ecosystem that will produce large-scale amounts of raw material and fibre with minimal environmental impact for our future partners and create a sustainable revenue stream. over to the next slide. Oops. Thanks for that. Uh, we back on now, Tim. Hello. Yeah, Hi. all good, Alfie. Keep Thank going. You. Thanks, Tim. Thanks. So I think we'll start off with just our corporate uh, snapshot. Um, so ASX code NC6. I have 117 million shares on options. Uh, share price has gone up since last week. Um, we're at 559 uh, five, uh, with a market cap of nearly 7 million. Um, and we have cash at the moment of about half a million. Uh, and at the moment, top, top, top 20 shareholders at 34% of the company and of the, bond, uh, of the board and management re re remaining 15%, which is a, a, tight, a tight structure. 
Um, our cash burn, I'm just on this money page here, our cash burn has reduced considerably since um, I want to say April this year, where we've had re um, several restructuring of uh, um, of uh, contracts with uh, various vendors and what have you. Management did take uh, pay cuts and what have you. And uh, this has all been compacted down to a, a sl much slower burn of about anything from 80 to $90,000 a month. Can I have uh, the next slide, please? So investment highlights, uh, again, on this page here, uh, we have been working on a scalable, um, revol uh, what we believe is a revolutionary uh, fibre. Uh, we didn't raise this money to stay small, as like I always say to people, we may stay, start off small, but we're definitely moving towards getting it much larger. Um, this is what's demanded by our customers. We signed a, um, a collaboration agreement. In the video, you would have heard two technologies. There's the growing of the raw material, and then there's the making of the raw material. The making raw material, which is the technology um, uh, uh, part of the business in terms of converting the raw material into fiber, we were able to sign a, a collaboration agreement with arguably the world's largest rayon maker um, in, uh, in India called Grassum, uh, who are also called Aditya Birla. Um, and they are helping us to accelerate the commercial, uh, the commercialization of our fiber. Uh, we had also strategic partner um, investment just recently with part of a capital raise with a group out of Queensland called Cellu Air, which um, is wanting to take our nanocellulose and putting it into higher grade filtrations and masks. And also we've signed an agreement last year with Cody, which is a B2B company making um, high-end wipes, personal wipes and, um, and all personal hygiene. And then also uh, this is all part of the all encompassing taking our raw material, developing our IP, IP suite. Um, Nanolose has also de developed, sorry, Nanolose has developed a technology that impacts many, many factors, which I'll get into later on in some other slides. Um, over the past 18 months, we have been advancing our fibre. We're going from initial lab trials to much larger trials to now pilot trials as we're, as we're moving towards um, initial production trials. Uh, we, made our first, we made our first garment last, uh, last year, um, which, is, uh, which is the first world's first rayon garment made out of completely no, free, no trees at all, which, which, we, which we've trademarked tree free. We are a pre-revenue uh, company. I say, like, like to say that when we first started the company, it was 70-30 R&D versus D, which I think is now flipped. 30% is R and then 70% and is D and growing. And um, needless to say, the kind of things that we do um, has, has, um, has attracted many, many um, people in the textile and fashion space, which is my background. I'm actually up to about 32 years in that space. Next slide, please. So how do we do this? Okay, today we procure from trees, which we'll talk about in the next slide. So we simply take liquid waste of feedstock from um, food and beverage companies, and we inoculate it with a bacteria that does, Mother Nature does all the work, grows this bacteria. We're learning to how to purify that, and then also take that pure, pure uh, raw material and then move it over to fiber making. And then when from fiber makes comes from yarn, and then from yarn comes into fabrics. The significance is, next slide please, so today, all cellulose comes from trees. So when we're talking to people and saying, did you know that the yoga pants that you're wearing come from trees? Most people are not sure. There's, four, there's five actual textile um, um, pies in the, in, in the world with petrochemicals being the, the largest, then cotton, then trees, then protein, and then now what I call alternatives, the things that are made out of the labs. But if we just focus on us, us versus them, so today all cellulose comes from trees. So we take trees, we cut them down, we chemically extract them, we get this, we get this cellulose, tree-based cellulose, and then it goes into an infrastructure. The difference between us and them is that we're not cutting down trees and we're not even chemically extracting it. So we bypass almost three parts of the whole process to arrive at a tree-free cellulose. And nanolose has been designed to work with the current infrastructure rather than change the fiber factory where we're providing an alternative feedstock, but also um, an alternative synthesis, synthesis rather. And what that does is by doing that, you know, you avoid large things. For example, there's no forestation, there's no wood pulping process, low energy, low pesticides, low water. And one thing that gets me very excited is that it takes 12 to 18 years to grow a tree. It, it takes six to eight days to grow microbial cellulose. So if we look at the, the intensity of growing in terms of vertical farming and what have you, and our new, new, new forest technologies and concepts of growing this, we're able to intensify that. So the yield per square meter is off the charts. Next slide, please. 
So here is just a nice glossy picture of it. What you see in the beaker there is waste from coconut has been fermented, then it's dried into fiber, and then it's made into, sorry, made it dried into flakes, and then it's made into fiber, then spun and made into a, a garment, just to provide you a snapshot of how we've, our process and our technology has been validated. The next slide, please. So clothing, we are very proud of our fibre. We've called it Nullarbor. Everyone thinks it's because we're Australian. That's only part of it. Nullarbor is actually Latin for no trees. Um, the rayon market is growing um, exponentially um, with the CAGA, I think, of about 7% plus every year. The reason for that is twofold. One is demand. And the second is that there, there, there is just a shift from, say, traditional buckets, for example, petrochemical and cotton, over to more what is considered more sustainable um, uh, avenues and alternatives. Um, so if we take what we have right now, um, which is about $16 billion versus to the projected nearly $21 billion, there's a there's a large space to play there. So by not even encroaching on the current supply, we feel like we can carve ourselves a very nice piece of the new, or what I call the new, the new alternative or the new demand. Um, and then from that, we're able to work with our, our, um, our partners in India so that we can scout with them as they are the largest in the world. Next slide, please. So when we're making fibers is one thing, your folium is the other. Um, our fiber is able to be blended. So we're able to increase our yields. Neufolium is also a fiber that we have been working with for, with other alternative cellulosic inputs so that we can address other customer needs of which one is, for example, personal wipes. Um, there's a lot of personal wipes. It falls into a, a space called non-woven. Uh, most of the face masks that we wear today are also non-woven. So this gives us an avenue to work in there from not just a yield standpoint, but also a cost and engineering standpoint. Next slide, please. And as we're diversified, so the shift has actually begun. I mean, I, three years ago, I get when I were on road shows, people are asking me, do people really care? Is it really, really important? And then over the last three years, we just see monumental fashion brands and retailers publicly um, criticizing themselves and putting their ESGs um, targets in front of the public eye and holding themselves accountable. Um, we have multiple NDAs with various brands and retailers around the world, and we continue to get more. Our focus is fibre first. We want to make fibre and deliver that, that, that fibre to these brands. And we probably cannot go and have a whole blunderbuss approach to it. We're going to be very strategic about the brands that we speak to. We want to speak um, or collaborate with between one to three and in various pockets, for example, outdoor or um, lingerie or fast fashion or high-end fashion, which is my favorite. Next slide, please. So just a little bit about our collaboration agreement with, uh, with Grassum. Like I said, they're a part of a big conglomerate out of India called Aditya Birla, which is about a $49 billion company. Um, rayon and textiles is about 5 billion of that. Um, they, we, uh, we signed an agreement with them in January this year. Um, I, I think it's a, a match made in heaven as their biggest goal is to reduce the cellulosic inputs that come from trees and look for alternatives. And Grassen continually kicks gold. There are, there are some world authorities like Canopy Style that, that monitors and puts some um, grading on what they call the green shirt or hot button of these companies. And Grassen continually, um, continually kicks those goals there. So what they say and what they do are aligned and we're very, very proud to be part of that association and develop this, develop this with them going forward. Next slide, please. Coyote Clarification Agreement is a B2B um, customer that works with some of the largest European wipes and manufacturers. Coyote is that um, the third, the second last, uh, second last um, chain in the whole chain of taking fibre and making products. Um, again, another, another group of companies that want to see a better world and want to start um, buying alternative feed, uh, feed stocks. And that's where they see us as a, as a potential advisor, a, um, prevent, a potential provider, but also innovator in this space. Next slide, please. Uh, we recently had a capital raise and which came with an also a strategic investment with CEO Air, which is a group out of um, Queensland in conjunction with another company called Innovise. Um, CEO Air is making um, um, steps towards advanced filtration technology. Um, and also this, when we talk about fi uh, filtration technology, it comes in very parts. It could be a mask, it could be the filters inside a mask can actually be filters inside um, uh, the hospitals, for example. Um, 
not to get too technical, but the raw material that we have has very amazing prop properties with regards to filtration, water absorption, and also um, to be um, pyrogenic and antimicrobial. So we felt that there was a synergy there. And, and what the beautiful part about this uh, um, uh, alliance is that we don't have to make fiber to give to Sadia Air, we can just keep it in a raw material. So it just gives us another pathway to commercialize from a raw material standpoint rather than a fiber standpoint. Next slide, please. So how are we all gonna do this? So it's a, it's a three part process. So for example, we have to increase supply uh, up until now, we've been doing it in double digits. We're going into three digits in the tonnage. We have agreements with um, two groups in Asia, one in Indonesia, and the largest one being in China to provide us initial amounts of, of microbial cellulose, working with them in, in conjunction with how to process it and have that to be industrially ready. When that's industrially ready, the more we make, the more we can pass to our industrial partner in India to take that and make it into fibre. And once that fibre is made, then we start engaging with the exclusive agreements or manufacturing agreements with um, with uh, commercial partners on the on the tertiary part of our business which is the basically the brands and retailers that are at the forefront from outdoor I won't mention names but you can kind of figure it out the people that are champions in this space from sports active to athleisure to outdoor to to lingerie to ready to wear and so forth and because of that we'll go into the next slide here it shows you what our new news flow catalyst will look like we believe, that, we believe that we're gonna be able to do all these things here between Q3 and Q2 of next year, where um, COVID, has, helped, um, COVID has, had, has had an impact on our business in as much that it has slowed logistics down. To move things around has been difficult. What used to take a week in China used to take three weeks, even though now that things are improving and returning to a new norm uh, or prior norm rather, um, where we feel like we can, we can play some acceleration games there to do that too. So we're confident that we're gonna be able to make tonnage, provide it to India, make fiber and commercialize with, uh, with a, a brand and a retailer in the next um, three or four quarters. Next slide, please. And I think that's the end of it. Yeah, this is my favorite part where I get to say everything I said or didn't really say. So any questions, please, Tim, bring them forth. Thanks, Alfie. I think, I think you might have a phantom typer in the background there. There's a little bit of a tapping, but um, let's, uh, let's talk about the no tree rayon in terms of pricing. Um, does it command a, a big premium or how does it compare with, you know, traditional material? Yeah. Well, um, we're, we're nowhere in the, in the industrial norm of what the tree fibre is at the moment, Tim. I mean, that's just purely on scale. You know, wood pulping has been around for 120 years and I like to think we've been around for 120 days. Um, so, um, but what we have seen in the past three years is that it's halved, halved, halved and halved. And we believe that in the future, when we have our own dedicated growing spaces, we'll bring that down, down, to down, down. Um, one, thing that's one thing that's important to highlight here is, um, I don't think I'm shooting myself in the foot when I say this, because our industrial partners are very comfortable with these statements. We may never be the same price as trees, but we may never ever sell to the same people that pay those things as well. So we, we, we probably can't provide a $6 t-shirt, but we can provide a $50 t-shirt, for example. So there's so many different pricing brackets and so much margin elasticity. So we want to work, that's why we we're saying before, we want to work with the, the people that are in that middle to high space that accept that. They're quick adopters and they're also very, very quick to, to, to invest in these spaces. So that's not the thing that keeps me up at night. No, Alfie, thank you. I understand it's a scale issue. Um, now, a question here in regards to, you know, the, the safety aspects of the product, uh, once mm. it degrades, is there any nanoparticle risk? Uh, can, you, can it be recycled, composted, et cetera? Uh, because it's 100% cellulose, it's compostable. It actually, it actually composts quicker than cotton um, if you put it into the ground. Um, Rayon per se naturally has an antimicrobial element. It's not something that you would untreat and put on a surgical bandage, but it does have an antimicrobial and antibacterial um, um, uh, infrastructure in, the, in its fibres. As far as being recyclable, I believe that it is. We've had conversations with people in our own space that are into recycled technologies, and we believe that if they're able to recycle cotton and rayon, you'll be able to re recycle our fibre too. Our fibre is going to be on the same par as rayon and lyocell. So it's not like it's completely different. It still has the same characteristics and it's going to be regenerated the same way. 
And what I mentioned before um, about the market shifting in terms of the pie chart, that's where rayon is expanding as it's, there's a demand, not just because of the softness and what have you goes into athleisure, but because rayon is, um, rayon is biodegradable, it is seen as a better fiber to say, for example, as a polyester alternative for the, for the time being. Um, and now if just one more, I, I didn't give you a bio and, and you've been in the industry, the global, global textile industry for about 30 years, right? Yeah. And, that, and that is an industry known for waste. Can you, can you tell us what uh, attracted you to this technology and, and, and the business? Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, I started the business when I had really a lot of hair. Um, Paul Neodoni would probably <laughs> tell you that. Um, I, I lived in Hong Kong for 25 years. I worked for the world's largest textile companies and sustainability was something that was always on top of mind. I guess as you get older and you look at the analytics, it just wasn't comfortable with the fact that we're the second most polluting industry and you hear different arguments, but it's not great. If we're not the, if we're not the second, we're the third either way. Um, what interested me about Nanolose is that it's a completely alternative feedstock. We're not trying to recycle polyester. There's lots of champions in that space. We're not trying to um, regenerate new cellulose out of, for example, cotton shirts. There's so many people in that space here. But I've, at a looking, I've been lucky, I've been looking at all these innovations through my career. I felt that this, this in particular had a, some, had le has legs because you're taking feedstocks that are currently either destined to water treatment or into landfill and getting, a, and getting an alternative. So, you know, how much, how much milk? I'll give you an example. Um, working with one coconut processor in the Philippines that produces 2 million litres of coconut water per day. What happens to that now? That goes straight into, goes straight into water treatment. So these are the sorts of things that I get excited about to saying we can, we can completely have an alternative source to make a fibre. And therefore, because we can have a source, I mean, it'll positively impact other places. So we can cut down less trees. And, you know, one thing about trees that people, you know, I, I can tell you this straight up, is that the best tree is not to cut it at all. If it's already 12 years old, it's going to be sucking carbon out of the air better than saying planting another hundred small trees. So leave the trees alone. And this is just a positive impact too. And the other thing too is coming from the industry that's screaming for alternatives. We've haven't, there's a new, there's a new dark, there's a new retrospective thinking, there's a new zeitgeist that's coming. So I figured as much as this industry has given me, it's time to give back. So that's part of one of the drives. I might sound like a bit of a hippie there, Tim, but that's the truth.